So during that night, while I was sleeping, more awake than sleeping, God literally downloaded that message into my spirit. And I went and sit in front of my computer this Sunday morning, and I just started to type. Sometimes I couldn't type it fast enough for, for what was just um, given to me to write, that word. So it's not, that word has nothing to do with me. It's really a word that God downloaded into my heart. But, um, and during this week, I was uh, confronted with, with what God wants me to share tonight. Um, but there's another message that I've been uh, journeying with that I really want to share. And every time, so I thought that's going to be tonight's, me tonight's message. And then God said on Friday, no, it's not time yet. It's not time yet for that message. So, so um, I had to, to really work through what God wants to share tonight, and, 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 and I got the bits and pieces since Friday of this message, and then this morning, while I was praying, um, I just got this, this, this topic, Adam, here I am, come out of your comfort zone, and I think it's sort of a follow-up on, Adam, where are you? It's this cry in God's heart, Adam, here I am, and because the, the Adam, where are you? came out of the story in the Bible of Adam and Eve who, who missed God, walking with God in the intimacy of the garden after they sinned. And then God came looking for them and he knew they were there, but he was crying out, Adam, where are you? Because he was looking for that intimacy. And so often in our own lives, we get to that place where we sin or where we make wrong choices. And then we can hear that cry of the Lord, Adam, where are you? Linda, where are you? Louis, where are you? Each one of you, just put in your name. Ina, where are you? Tillman, where are you? Adam, where are you? And he wants us to return to that place of intimacy with him. But when we live in that place of intimacy with him, we sometimes even miss him in that place of intimacy with him. And then it is where he says, here I am, <laughs> come out of your comfort zone. And um, so, so this, this past week with the Joshua here interns, we, we do in discipleship, Mike Bickle's book, Passion for Jesus, Many of you have, have worked with us through that book, so we are now in week 10, if you can remember what week 10 is about, but I'm not going to talk about that. But in our discussion, so, and we're, we're not even done with week 10, we, have, we are going to do it over two weeks, but in our discussion, we, we started to talk about having to come out of our comfort zones, having to get to a place where we are willing to leave our comfort zones. And, um, and then suddenly, while we were busy having this discussion, and Josh, you didn't send me that note that you took, so I had to wait on the Holy Spirit. I might have missed some of it. So Josh started to write what I said, <laughs> because it was this revelation, I think. And, and I said to him, he must send me those notes, but he did not. He, he's keeping my notes for himself. Um, so, uh, but, but while we were having this discussion, I realized that our own comfort zone is this boxed in space. It is the space where we are comfortable in our own inabilities, where we are comfortable in our own um, limited abilities, limited resources, in our own limited knowledge. We are comfortable, we are boxed in this place where we are, where we know ourselves and we are dependent on who we are. And that's our comfort zone. That's our go-to place. And then God's comfort zone is the place, God's zone of comfort, I call it, is the place where we enter into his limitlessness, is the place where we enter into his abilities, it's the place where we enter into his knowledge and into his resources. But so often, we just love our own comfort zones. We don't like the um, unfamiliar and that's why we, we so struggle to step out of this place of our own comfort zone. 
So the question is, what is a comfort zone? And, and this extremely intelligent <laughs> source uh, that's sometimes uh, good and sometimes bad, but I ask Uncle, uh, Uncle Google, or maybe it's Auntie Google because women are so wise. Um, when the Bible speaks about wisdom in Proverbs, it, use, it speaks about she... <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but I asked Google, and, and actually the very first answer I got asking Google, what is a comfort zone? The description I got is that it says it's a situation where one feels safe and at ease. Where you feel safe and at ease. And it is a settled method of working that of working that requires little effort and yields only barely acceptable results. If you stay within your comfort zone, you will never improve, according to Google. <laughs> but it's so true. And it's such an accurate description of what I felt the Holy Spirit was sharing with me these past few days. And, um, and perhaps... While I was writing this, I thought, perhaps you saw the ad for tonight, and you thought, oh, this is about someone who must step out of their comfort zone and go into the jungle to do missions. Or this is about someone resigning their job and going into full-time prayer ministry. How ridiculous. Or this might be about joining the evangelism group, still keeping my job, but getting a little bit of my comfort zone and just join the evangelism group. Or something else that's radical. But it's not that, that simple. It's way more radical. It's way more radical than resigning your job. It's way more radical than going into Africa, into the jungle. It's way more radical It is about the comfort zones that we, each one of us, loves to live in. It is about the place that we, where we feel safe and at ease, where we think we, it's okay to just kick off our shoes and put on our slippers. It's, a, it's about the place where we think it doesn't require any effort from us. But the sad news is, that however this comfort zone can be the most comfortable, bla comfortable place um, we can be in, this, we can feel it's the most comfortable place that we can be in, the exact opposite is actually the truth. It is not a safe place. It's not really a comfortable place. It's a place of robbing us of so much, but it is our go-to place. It's the place where we go to when we are tired. It's the place where we go to when we hear bad news. It's the place where we go to when we hear good news. It's the place where we go to in our every life situation. It's the place where you go to when you go to the ATM and you put in your card and you punch in an amount and you get a little slip or a little message on the screen, sorry, insufficient funds. Your comfort zone is that place where you go to whenever life happens in your life. That is our comfort zone. It's the place where you go to when someone disagree with you. The way you react, the way you respond, that is your comfort zone. That is your go-to place. So when I go back to our comfort zone versus God's zone of comfort... I hear God is crying out, here I am. Adam, here I am. Linda, here I am. Maria, here I am. Didi, here I am. Marlu, here I am. God is crying out. He's crying out your name and he's saying, here I am. Get out of that comfort zone. Get out of that comfort zone and come into my zone of comfort. And where do we find God's zone of comfort? In his word. We discover his zone of comfort in his word. And that's why it's so important for us to spend time in his word, to get to know his word. Let me give a few examples. To many of us, stress might be a comfort zone. That, sorry, no, sorry, insufficient funds. 
Your comfort zone you might go into might be immediately to start to stress and worry. Worry might be your comfort zone. And that's why I said sometimes our comfort zones aren't that comfortable. Our actual comfort zones aren't that easy to go to, but we go there. It is the familiar way to go for us. It's the, it's, it's the way that is um, engraved in our brains, the way that we respond. So if stress is your go-to in situations where you don't have any answers to, or in a crisis situation, it means that you've made that your comfort zone. And um, when stress is our comfort zone, we move into that place in our thoughts where we play out all the different negative scenarios about this situation causing the stress. <laughs> if you get that message, that's uh, it's back. So. If we get that message, sorry, insufficient funds, we can immediately start to play out various scenarios. If you were about to draw funds to pay off a debt, now suddenly you see the police van driving up your street and you see him come parking right in front of your house and you see the policeman come jumping out of the police van with their guns to come and take you into custody because you couldn't pay your debt. It's a ridiculous example, but that's what we do. We have these ridiculous examples that we go to in our thought life. We play out all these scenarios of what is going to happen. Afrikaans has this um, saying, I don't know what it is in English. I don't know if in English there is a saying like that. But it's to go and catch the baboon behind the mountain. And some people really have large zoos of baboons. Because of all the baboons that we go and fetch behind the mountains, because of all the scenarios we play out in our heads when something happens, because that's our comfort zone. That's our go-to. That's our go-to place. So it's this boxed space, boxed in space, where we limit ourselves to our own abilities, our own knowledge, our own resources, and who we are. Our own weakness. That's our comfort zone. So stress is caused by our own inability to see the outcome that God sees. It is caused about our lack of knowledge about the situation. It is caused by, the, by our lack of resources. And it is caused by our immature character. That's who we are. But what is God's zone of comfort? When we just go to the matter of stress and Deuteronomy 31.8 from the New Living Translation, it says, Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord will personally go ahead of you. He will be with you. He will never, he will neither fail you nor abandon you. If you are at this moment worried about tomorrow, worried about what's going to happen tomorrow, and you are maybe playing out a lot of scenarios in your head about tomorrow, God's zone of comfort is telling you, do not be afraid and do not be discouraged. Don't worry about tomorrow, he says, because he says that he, the creator of heaven and earth, he is personal, personally going ahead of you. So guess what? He's already there in tomorrow. He's already sorting out this, this situation for you in your tomorrow. That's who he is, and that's his character, and that's where he is. So if we are willing to step out of our own comfort zone, out of our own limited space, 
and step into his zone of comfort. We will relax because we know that the God of heaven and earth, the creator of everything, the one to whom nothing is impossible, is already there. But he's not leaving me behind him today to keep on worrying. No, he says, he will be with me. He will never, neither fail me or abandon me. So he's going there already, but he's staying with me as well. Sorting this out in my head if I allow him. Sorting this out in my heart if I allow him. If I choose to step out of my own boxed-in limited comfort zone, to step into his zone of comfort where he is unlimited, where he is omniscient, where he is already present. We read in Philippians, I'm still going to stay a little bit on this. Okay, now it's working again. Thank you, Joss. <laughs> so I feel to stay a little bit on this, in this human comfort zone of worry or stress. Uh, maybe God wants to invite some of us to step out of this specific place. Maybe that's why he led me to, to, to look at a few scriptures on this specific matter to show us what is his zone of comfort. So when we look at Philippians 4, verse 6 to 7, again from the New Living Translation, he says, don't worry about anything. It means don't worry about anything. It's so simple. I haven't studied the Greek or the Hebrew, but I am sure if you go to the Greek, it will say the same thing. Don't worry about anything. It won't say so worry sometimes. Or these are uh, the, the limited uh, number of events that can cause worry, that's okay. No, it says don't worry about anything. But then it says, pray about everything. What is prayer? It's to talk to God. It says, don't worry, come talk to me, have conversation with me. I actually know something about this thing that you are worrying about. I actually know everything, come talk to me. Tell God what you need and then thank him for what he has done. Because he already went into action the moment that you came to speak to him. I want to share an example. Um, when, when God la <coughs> laid it on our hearts to buy the house we live in, we didn't have a palisade in front of the house. And one day I was backing out of the garage and I thought, I didn't pray, I thought, I must tell Marie, we must pray about trusting God for a palisade in front of our house. That was my thought, not my prayer even. The next day, someone phoned us and said, I was working on a mine and they had this palisades that was removed and they gave it away and God said, I must come and put it up in front of your house. Did not even pray, just thought to pray. <laughs> and God went into action because of that. Because that's who he is. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. The peace that surpasses all understanding, says the New King James Version. His peace will guard over your heart and your mind as you live in Christ Jesus. I always see... This, um, I, I don't know why I see it as these pommy guards in front of the palace in London. I've never even been there, but I've seen the photos. So I see this guard sent by God to come and stand in front of my mind and my heart, not allowing negative thoughts to come in, not allow negative things to come into my heart when I pray, when I talk to him and ask him and thank him and trust him. 
because that's who God is. That is his zone of comfort we can enter into. We can enter into that place of having the peace that surpasses all understanding. We can enter into that place of sleeping in a storm. We can enter into that place of having joy in the midst of turmoil because of who God is, because of stepping into his, com- his zone of comfort, which is supernatural. People might think you are crazy to step into that supernatural praise. I have seen, I have heard testimonies of, of believers who lose someone they love dearly to, um, who died, and then at the funeral or just the day after, these people have the peace that surpasses all understanding, and they are full of joy. And the world will say, oh, don't, don't worry, just give them time. They will cr- come crashing down, but they never come crashing down because the supernatural zone of comfort of God is to keep us standing. It's to keep us in a place of having peace. It's to keep us in a place of being um, content, being happy, being full of joy, being what God wants us to do. Let me go to Colossians 1, verse 9 to 11. So it says, So we have not stopped praying for you since we first heard about you. This is now Paul speaking to this uh, church. We ask God to give you complete knowledge of his will and to give you spiritual wisdom and understanding. So God's supernatural zone of comfort is to have complete knowledge and it is to have spiritual wisdom and understanding within a situation. Then the way you live will always honor and please God. Because you know what? When we worry about something, when we stress about something, we are not honoring God. Because our emotions that we are feeling are actually saying, God is not able to sort out my problem. Ouch. It's hurting, but it's the truth. When we worry about someone we love, and that person is not changing their lives, when we are praying and interceding and trusting God to change someone, and we worry more than what we pray, We talk more to other people about this than we talk to God about this person. We are dishonoring God because we are not trusting him enough. We think my friend will be able to listen better than what God will be able to listen to me. We think my friend might be able more to sort out this situation than what God will be. When we have financial problems, we easily go to the bank to get a loan. But it's hard for us to go to God, to ask Him for His provision, and to have faith for Him to provide for us. Because the comfort zone is to go to the bank. God's zone of comfort is to come to Him, and to talk to Him, and to trust Him, and to ask Him, and to have faith for His way, for His supernatural way. That is God's zone of comfort. So we also pray, and then Paul goes and he says, we also pray that you will be strengthened with all his glorious power so that you will have the endurance and the patience you need. May you be filled with joy, always thanking the Father. He has enabled you to share in the inheritance that belongs to his people with life in the light. The inheritance that belongs to us is to live a life of victory in the supernatural world. Not to live a life of defeat in the natural world we are in. That's not his plan for us. That's not his inheritance for us. Sorry, I didn't go to that slide. That is not his inheritance for us. He wants us to be in that place where we live and walk in the supernatural world where he is present, where he is omnipresent, where he is able to do more than what we can pray or think, where he is able to do the impossible. That's where he wants us to be. Let's look at another general comfort zone many of us have. And it is <laughs> our go-to when we are tired. You know, we are living in a very fast-paced life. And most people that I come across with, and most people that come across me, 
hears the words, I am so tired. Oh, I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm really tired. Oh, my goodness, you don't know how tired I am. Do you know how tired I am? I'm so tired. How many of us use these words? Be honest. Are you willing to be honest? I am tired. We all say that. God has a zone of comfort for us. Isn't that good news? He has a zone of comfort for us. But let's just quickly go to what might be our comfort zones when we are tired. YouTube. Oh, I just have to unwind a little bit. Let me watch this series. And then I watch what, episode one, episode two, episode three, episode four. And suddenly I keep on watching until three in the morning and then I'm not tired anymore. But the next morning when I get up, oh boy, I am tired. <laughs> or maybe it's gaming. Or maybe it's to sleep. Not that I say you can't sleep. But it's to sleep at work, it's to sleep during lunchtime, it's to sleep when you get home, it's to sleep all through the night and not do anything else but sleep. And when you get up, oh, I'm so tired. It's, it's a sickness of the time we live in, to be tired. Because we go into our own comfort zones, and we think our own comfort zones, but these are not comfort zones that can give us the rest that we need. But God has a zone of comfort for us. And we read in Matthew 11, Matthew 11, 2, verse 28, it must be verse 28 to 30. Then Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give to you is light. And I want to read it from the Passion Translation as well. It says, are you weary carrying a heavy burden? Come to me. I will refresh your life, for I am your oasis. Simply join your life with mine. He says, join your life with mine. Learn my ways and you'll discover that I'm gentle, humble, easy to please. You will find refreshments and rest in me. For all that I require of you will be pleasant and easy to bear. There is a supernatural realm of God where God is able to give us true rest, where we can get up in the morning and feel rested and feel refreshed and feel strengthened because that's his promise. He wants to give us rest within every storm we might be in, within every circumstance we might be in. He wants to be our resting place. He wants to be our go-to when things are tiring us. He wants to be the one who wraps himself around us so that we can be in him and he in us, and so that he can be our strength, so that he can be our power, so that he can be our rest. And of course we need to be wise and sleep, not just three or two hours a night. Then we will grow tired. We have to sleep enough at night to to rest our bodies. But you know, sometimes it's not a lack of sleep that causes us to be tired. It's because we go to the wrong comfort zone. It's because we, in, we, we embrace our limited comfort zone. And we go and sit in that limited comfort zone and we totally miss out on God's unlimited zone of comfort that's available to us. So there are many other <laughs> comfort zones, many other examples we can talk about. We can go on for a whole weekend if we want to. But I want to go to how do I step 
out of my own comfort zone and into his zone of comfort. How, how do I do this when I hear, Adam, here I am, come out of your comfort zone. What do I do? How do I get out of that place? How do I step out of my own comfort zone, my own limited comfort zone, into his zone of comfort? And the answer is the same as it was a few weeks ago when I spoke about Christianity made easy. And it's the same that I spoke about two weeks ago when we heard that cry of God, Adam, where are you? It's the exact same answer. Mark 12, 30. And you must love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind, and all of your strength. It's a choice we make. It's a choice we make to be brave enough and bold enough to say, I am now done with limited comfort zones in my life. I am now done with this natural world. I am now done with all these negative things. I am now done with this. I am now going to step out of this and I am going to take the step and be bold enough to step into God's zone of comfort. Because I'm saying it's, it's a boldness it requires of us because it is to be willing to step into his storyline. It is to be willing to step into the storyline of Jesus. And when we choose to step into his storyline, we choose to step into what he says in his word is true. If you missed Marie's message last week when he spoke on healing and the authority that God is giving us, it won't, it won't be on the YouTube channel yet because Nicole hasn't um, put it on because they are still on, on vacation, but when they come back, she will put it on. If you've missed that, that or if you really want to see it, go watch it on the Facebook page. But it's God asking us to step out of that place of comfort when there's sickness to go to a doctor. And I'm not saying don't go to a doctor. I am so grateful Marie's brother and his wife took my mother-in-law to the hospital today. I'm so grateful for that. But it was what did we do? What did we choose to do in that moment when we heard she's in the emergency rooms? Did we step back into a limited comfort zone that we might be in? to hope the doctors will have enough knowledge? Or was it to step in faith into that place of the unknown, but knowing that God is the God who can do the impossible, knowing that God is the God who heals, he says that in his word, knowing that God is the God who gives us the authority to pray and to step into that place, because that takes boldness, that takes courage to step into the unknown where it requires faith which you cannot see, something which you cannot see in a God whom you cannot see but whom you know is true and who is alive. So it's a choice we make. It's a choice to get into the place where we choose to walk away from all the distractions around us, where we choose to put down our cell phone or switch it off, or turn it, put it on silent, or airplane mode. It's a choice we make to switch off the television. It's a choice we make to cancel an appointment because we haven't had an appointment with Jesus yet. It's a choice we make to delete everything on our tablets which is distracting us. Because the reality is we use tablets. I am using a Bible, all my Bibles on my tablet. We do have book Bibles in the house, but it's so great to carry all the different translations with me everywhere on a tablet. So that's a reality. So I'm not going to say, throw your tablet in the trash and get a book Bible again. No, but if there's stuff on there distracting you, delete it. It's easy. If, you're, if you have an Apple device, you just hold in long enough, then it gives you the option to choose delete, and then you press delete, and then it's gone. Really, it works. <laughs> just do it. It's, but it's a choice. It's a choice to say, I'm not going to open it just one more time. No. No, if it's distracting, you get rid of it. If it's distracting you from stepping into God's zone of comfort, get rid of it. 
and move into the place that Isaiah 40 talks about. And we read in Isaiah 40, verse 31, But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The verse just before this one says, young men will even, even young men will get tired and fall out. It's not the exact wording, but it's saying that. Even young men won't be able to continue. But then it gives this promise, those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. We step into God's zone of comfort when we choose to say yes to waiting on him instead of running to man. We step into God's zone of comfort when we choose to wait on him instead of running to man or to run around in a circle in our own heads. You know why people, most people are really just not knowing where they are going? Because they are running around in their own heads the whole time. They are not waiting on God. They are not going to God. It is when we say yes to having conversation with Jesus about something or someone or any matter instead of having conversations with people about that. And it's not wrong to have conversation with people. Sometimes we need to talk to people because they give us perspective when we battle a bit to have perspective over a matter. But God wants us to come to him first, to speak to him first, and then maybe go to a brother and sister and say, can I talk to you about this? I just want confirmation for what I heard from the Lord. And then maybe, the, maybe when you heard from the Lord, you, heard, you, you prayed subjectively. Marie once had a sermon that is following me all the days of my life about praying with an idol in your heart. Maybe he will share it sometime again. Maybe you've heard it in Whitbank South when you we were there with us. But... Um, Sometimes we pray with an idol in our hearts and then we don't really hear God. And then it's good to go to a brother or sister that you know can hear the voice of God to pray with you and to listen with you. And another brother and sister to pray with you and to listen with you. But it's first go to God. Say yes to having conversation with Jesus. It is when we say yes to stepping out of the natural time zone. <laughs> Listen to this one. When I wrote it, I was like, I, I, I first just thought, maybe I must delete it. Because <laughs> it doesn't make sense, but it makes completely sense. It's when we say yes to stepping out of the natural time zone where everybody is on the run. And to step into a prayer room or your prayer closet and to choose to sit in his presence. You know, we live in a life where everybody is running. I think everybody can go and run the comrades because everybody must be completely fit. Because we are running the whole time. But that's the natural time zone we are stuck in. But God says, say yes to stepping out of this time zone and schedule a time in your diary, in your busy life, to just go and sit in your prayer closet for an hour, two hours, three hours. And if you don't have a prayer closet and if it's too busy in your house or in your workplace, there's a house of prayer in your city. It's open from Tuesdays to Fridays. You can go and sit there. You can just say yes to stepping out of this time zone, stepping out of this busyness. It is to say yes to what the world might think is foolish, but is wisdom in God's kingdom. It is to say yes to tithing. <laughs> it is to say yes to offering. It is to, to say yes to giving to someone else. The world might think you are absolutely foolish if your income is 1,000 rand and your expenses is 2,000 rand and you give away 100 rand and you're left with 900. How are you going to cover your 2,000 rand expenses? It's foolishness to the world. But it is God's wisdom. And it's changing your life. I can remember when we just started out in ministry, we had an income of 700 rand. 
our rent for our little garden flat was 660 rand. It's really true that 30, 29 years ago, you paid 660 rand for a one-bedroom garden flat. And we tithed 70 rand. And we bought food. And we had petrol in our car. And we had a telephone, because I had to be able to phone my mom. And then when cell phones came out, we got the cell phone. And a lot of stuff with an income that doesn't make sense. It didn't sum, it didn't, the, the, the sums just didn't work out. All the cal calculations in the natural were wrong, but in the spiritual it was working out because that's who God is. That is who God is and he, and all these yeses that we say in all the different areas of our lives, where we say, I'm going to step out of the natural way of doing things into the supernatural way of doing things, is stepping out of our comfort zone and it is responding to God's cry, Adam, here I am, step out of your comfort zone. Zone to come, I'm waiting for you, and it is to believe that the Word of God is truth, and that God is who He says He is, and that He can do what He says He can do, even though it might seem impossible in the natural realm we live in. That is to step out of our own comfort zones. That's why I said in the beginning, it's way more radical than to go into the jungle, you know what happens when you go to a church and you say, oh, God called me to the Amazon. I'm going to walk between the, among all the snakes. And will you please give me money to go and also pray that they won't bite me? Then people think, wow, that's amazing. And they, they give you lots of money. They pay your plane ticket and they buy you clothes and a backpack and everything you might need to be in the Amazon. And snake repellent. It's easy. But God says, no, be brave. Step out of your natural comfort zone, your natural go-to that you have into my supernatural zone of comfort and start to trust me for everything in your life. Everything in your life. So, Josh, you guys can come up. So tonight we have an invitation. I hoped we had, we would all, we'll have more time, but we have 10 minutes. So... Um, if you want to stay longer, you are so welcome. I'm going to close in prayer after I shared the invitation. And then you can stay for as long as you want. And they will keep on worshiping as long as there's people in the room. Is that okay, Joss? <laughs> no, he wants to be in his comfort zone. He needs to spend time with his girlfriend. Um, so, but the invitation tonight, the invitation to me and the invitation to you, our comfort zones, into his zone of comfort. In this moment, you know of an area in your life where you are in a comfort zone which is totally limited. You know of an area in your life where you are sitting and you are just boxing yourself in with your own unlimited uh, limited knowledge, your own limited resources, your own limited self. And God is inviting you to step out of that place of comfort into his zone of comfort, into his supernatural. Are you willing to say yes tonight? He's asking, he's asking, because he's saying, here I am, I'm waiting, here I am. I'm waiting for you to step out of your comfort zone. But I must warn you, I must say to you that if you say yes tonight, you might perhaps find yourself walking into a challenge tomorrow <laughs> in which he's going to ask you to act, to respond to the yes that you said tonight. And this is not a curse that I'm speaking over you because life happens. Life happens. And we get challenged all the time to choose between our own comfort zones and his zone of comfort. So he's inviting us tonight if we want to say yes. And I'm inviting you, if you want to say yes, do it during the worship time that we're going to have now. 
just respond to his invitation. Because when we do make this choice to step out of our own comfort zone into his zone of comfort, which is supernatural, life, your life, I can give you the assurance your life will explode in the positive, good sense or way. Your life will explode in the way that your emotions will change, that your understanding of things will change, what you will see in the supernatural and then see it manifest in the natural. So that will start to happen in your life. Because you will walk out of your limited box where it's just you and your walls into his unlimited space where it is our God to whom nothing is impossible. And that's where he's inviting us into. Father, I'm coming now to you in the name of Jesus. And Father, it's, it's difficult to make this, this, this choice. I'm, I'm, I'm just honest. That in this moment, sometimes it's just easier to step back into my own comfort zone than to step out into your zone of comfort, which is, which is unfamiliar and which requires a lot of faith and which requires knowledge of your word, which I might often not have, Father. So, Father, sometimes I don't even know what is your zone of comfort. And then I just step back into my own comfort zone. But I come to you tonight, Father, and I ask, give me and give each one of us the boldness to say yes to your invitation. And together with this, Father, to say yes to the Holy Spirit, to become our teacher, to teach us what the zone of comfort looks like that belongs to you, the supernatural zone of comfort. And to break open your word and your promises in your word to us so that we can know what is your zone of comfort into each situation that we face. Because God, you have a zone of comfort for everything that this life might bring to us everything because Jesus you died on the cross for everything that might come our way and you have a scripture in your word a promise in your word covering to discover that to start to live in your zone of comfort and no longer be stuck in our own limited comfort zones I ask this in the name of Jesus father and then I also just want to pray and ask you will you be with us each one during this week. Father, if we encounter challenges this week, will you help us in that moment to remember our yes tonight and to step into the unknown, your zone of comfort. And Father, if we don't, Holy Spirit, help us not to, to just retrace, retract and go back, but help us to just get up and to continue on this yes that we've said tonight. And next time, to be able to, to actually step out. Because, Father, what matters to you is the yes in our spirit. Even when we fail in our action, you see the yes in our spirit. Will you help each one of us, Father, in the weeks to come, to live in your zone of comfort, your supernatural zone of comfort. Father, I ask now also in the name of Jesus, will you guard over us as we drive home later? and protect us, be with us, and keep us safe, and keep our homes safe. In Jesus' name, amen.